Okay. All right. Gonna just get this video started here. Um, gonna be going over a couple of different things and uh, gonna give some time here for people to come in. This is not an announced video. Um, so they get a couple of things ready here to go. Gonna be looking at the issue of um let me get my thing up here. Whoop. And um gonna be looking at the thing of should we be fighting what's going on? That's what this is about. So Hi, everybody over there. Nice to see people coming in here. Um, I actually did a sermon on this, and it just didn't turn out really all that good. I recorded it and um, went over the different scriptures, and, and it was just kind of, eh, you know, didn't go so good. Um, so... In case anybody's wondering, I'll just say a little thing I'm working on right now. I'm not wearing my glasses because they're they're really starting to kind of bother my eyes. Back when I was in intermediate school, um, I actually was wearing glasses uh, right about the time I got out of elementary school, about sixth grade, I think. Started wearing glasses, and it was about a year or two, and um, and I ended up I started getting really bad headaches and you know whatever. Went back to the um, you know, went back to the eye doctor and he told me, he put me through all the tests and everything. And he said, stop wearing your glasses. What do you mean? And he said, well, your eyes have corrected. They, they've gotten better actually. So for a couple of years, I stopped wearing glasses and, and, uh, then I ended up going back to glasses and I've been wearing glasses ever since then. And, um, just been I did some research into the thing of uh, natural health cures for your eyesight and um, there's actually a book by uh, Dr. John DeWitt and um, and uh, he's out in California works with Dr. John Bergman um, they're natural type of doctors and uh, he wrote a whole book on on a uh, technique that you can actually improve your eyesight through nutrition nutritional health as well as different exercises for the eyes and things so I've been doing that and uh, so I can, I mean, I can, I still have to wear my glasses when I'm driving. It's not perfect, but I cannot read anymore with my glasses on. It just does not work. <laughs> so if you, if, if you've seen in any of my videos, I, when I pick up the Bible, hi, hi to everybody. When I pick up the Bible, I'll go like this and I'll read because I, I'm trying to actually get away from my glasses because I, I just, it just blurs my vision now when I'm wearing my glasses. But I got to thinking about it and this whole thing of, when I was a, a young man, early teens, why did I get, you know, give up my glasses? Well, it was because at that point I was really getting into um, uh, dirt biking and I was away from video games. So uh, kind of an interesting thing. Um, and now that we're living off grid and I don't have as much time at the computer, I can really feel my eyesight starting to kind of, I'm starting to get a lot of pain in my eyes when I wear my glasses and, stuff so that's why I'm not doing I'm not wearing my glasses so I'll uh, let people know about it if it really does work and whatever else when my eyesight is back completely uh, it's it's pretty good it's I can I can I could drive without glasses but I just prefer to keep my glasses on so but uh, if you want to get your King James Bible out I'm gonna do a little bit of a Bible study here um, so, um, going to be reading here some different scriptures. Um, just to respond here to Emma here, I was going to say maybe there's natural herbal cures for that for the eyes. There, there is a thing of a uh, eye bright. There's an herb. I think it's eye bright, and um, they say that that's you know a good cure for it and whatever else. And it actually grows on our property and we actually had picked it 
uh, quite a bit of it last year and um, not sure if we were going to make a, a tea or whatever else. I know that you make kind of an eye drop thing, you put it in your eye. So I, I haven't done that yet. Um, it's just mostly, um, you know, um, just uh, higher levels of uh, vitamin A, vitamin K. Um, so, but uh, the, the issue we're going to be discussing here is fighting the antichrist system. Okay. Um, because we're seeing a lot of things uh, here. Yeah. Just click on this one here real quick. Anderson personally attacked you yesterday. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll watch that video. I actually have it up here ready to go at the top of my screen. Um, so, yeah, we'll be, we'll be discussing that. Um, hi to everybody again. Uh, it's nice to see everybody. Um, but th this whole thing of this coronavirus and there, I mean, you can obviously, if, you, if you're a Christian, you know, this thing has to be spiritual. The level of deception is just too big for just, uh, you know, staged event or whatever. And you can, and you can see, um, you know, uh, you can, you can kind of see this whole thing kind of dovetailing into the economy collapsing of all the different countries. Because, I mean, they've been having a hard time with this for years. You know, the dollar is the reserve currency for the world, and, and the dollar is just falling apart. And they're printing more and more of it with the Federal Reserve, and they can't keep this thing going. They just can't. And uh, so they're, they're going to have to get rid of, you know, the world economy, and then they're going to have to bring in a new system, which we understand as Bible-believing Christians. The question is, um, do we fight it, or do we simply say, Hey, uh, this this whole thing is um, it's what the Bible says would happen. We know it's going to happen. So what's the point of fighting it? All right. Um, and I've been thinking about that. And the Lord brought a scripture to my mind, which is very important. So if you want to get your King James Bible, um, the the live the I'll just answer here. How long has the stream been on? Not very long. I've been talking mostly about eyesight. So we're just going to be, um, you know, doing a uh, um, little Bible study here. Now I'm going to get into some videos and some other stuff. We'll just kind of have a little fellowship time here. Um, but if you want to turn in your King James Bible, get your King James Bible out, ready to go. And um, we're going to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay. Um, very important passage here. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Uh, me, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put up the sword searcher thing because I realize maybe some people might not have the Bible. Um, see if I can do this. Share screen. Screen one. Share. Okay. All right. We're going to go to Second Thessalonians. Chapter two, hopefully everybody can see that. Okay. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Our gathering together unto him is not the second coming. Okay, you have to get that, you know, you have to understand that. That is the catching up. Um, so yeah, praise the Lord for everybody that's that's uh tuning in here. Good to see everybody. Verse two, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. OK, <clears throat> he's saying he's talking about the gathering together up here, which would be the resurrection. Down here, he talks about the day of Christ. The day of Christ is not the resurrection. OK, that's a very important understanding. The rapture, as many people call it. All right. It's not the same thing. Why? Well, because you're not going to be troubled. <laughs> All right. If I tell you, hey, I think the catching up is going to be happening soon, that's not going to trouble you. You're not going to say, oh, no, really? Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> um, so uh, it's not talking about the the catching up. And, it, of course, you know, as the day of Christ is at hand. And, um, you know, I know a lot of guys say, well, the day of Christ is always a reference to the rapture. No, it isn't. That is not true. Um, and a, a way that you can show this, that the day of Christ is very similar to the day of the Lord. Um, actually heard um, Andrew Fluter say the one time, and he was actually right in this, I think, that the day of the Lord is what the lost people will experience, and the day of Christ is what saved people will experience, but it's the same thing. 
Um, it's it's the second coming of Christ that starts the thousand year reign. Okay, that's what the day of of the Lord is, and the day of Christ. It's the same thing. One day is with the Lord is a thousand years. So it's the second coming that starts the millennial kingdom. Okay, that's what it's talking about there, and that's why they're shaken in mind and troubled because they're they're thinking, do we miss the rapture? Do we miss the resurrection? And Paul's saying no. Talking about the resurrection up here is that the day of Christ is at hand. People are getting them, making them think that the second coming is is happening. That they're going to be going into the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, <clears throat> Let no man deceive you by any means. So the people that are saying this stuff up here to them that the day of Christ is at hand, they're deceiving them. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. All right. Um, right there, this is obviously, you know, there are reformed theologians that will say that the Antichrist is merely the system. It's not, um, you know, a man, an actual physical man. Well, yes, he, yes, he is. He as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. It is talking about a physical man. Okay. That's very important to understand that. Okay. Um, but you see the thing here of two things have to happen before the day of Christ. Uh, there's come a falling away first. And, you know, a lot of people say that that's an apostasy there. Um, you know, it's, it's people falling away from the, the truth. And you see that throughout the Pauline epistles. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, you know, the whole thing. Um, so you do see that. Okay. But, um, then people say, well, then we also have to see the man of sin. All right. I'm getting I'm looking over here at the comments on the side. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit distracted. Sorry about that. But they'll say, see, the, the falling away first, the apostasy happens, and we also see the man of sin, the son of perdition. That is not true. Why? You have to keep reading. All right. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. I mean, I'll get back to this thing up here in just a minute. But if you go back to First Thessalonians, Chapter five, if somebody says it's the rapture. No, it isn't because right here, um, the day of the Lord is mentioned. Okay, you see it right there. The day of the Lord is what Paul's referring to. That's why he says here in Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse five, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Okay, he's telling them about the difference between the resurrection and the day of the Lord. Right, that's what's going on here, and people are confusing them and saying, "No, it's the same thing," and whatever. Um, no, it doesn't work that way. But here's the important part. Here's the the key to this whole thing. This question of should we fight the Antichrist system? All right, um, <clears throat> verse six. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. All right, what's going on here? He is in context. The Antichrist up here, the son of perdition. All right. That's the he. He might be revealed in his time. What is that? Well, that is the church age, the time where the body of Christ is physically on the earth. You and I, if you're saved, we are in the body of Christ. As Christians, we um, it is our time, so to speak, down here on this on this earth. We are part of Christ's body. So when um when the body of Christ is completed, we leave, right? So the Antichrist cannot be revealed when we are on the earth, when the body of Christ is on the earth. And what are we supposed to do? Withholdeth. We're supposed to hinder the Antichrist system. Okay, how do you know? Keep reading. Verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. The spirit of Antichrist right there. We will look about that here in just a minute. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way and then shall that wicked be revealed okay what's going on here he who now let will let until he be taken out of the way well who is that well that's the body of christ i mean you could say it's the holy spirit is hindering here let in your king james bible is another word for hinder or slow down or stop kind of a thing the holy spirit is hindering the antichrist from showing up he's hindering that system until he be taken out of the way people say oh the holy spirit no, it's 
the body of Christ. Again, remember, his time. So I would say, he who now letteth is the Holy Spirit within us, within the body of Christ, until he be taken out of the way there, until the body of Christ is gone. How do you know that? Okay, again, you say, well, well how, do, how can you be sure? This is a weird interpretation. Well, very simple. Revelation chapter 5. Okay, and you get down here, um, 24 elders, 4 and 20 elders, it's, it says it right there. Okay, they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. That's obviously Christians, it's not just Jews, right? They'll say, What's well, the 12, 12 apostles and the 12 patriarchs? No, it isn't. Out of every kindred, tongue, and people, nation. When you study Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 18 through 19, God has separated the, the bounds of different nations. There's 12 nations according to God, separated them according to the number of the children of Israel. Okay, very important to get that. And has made us unto, unto God, our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Millennial reign, thousand year kingdom reign, is promised to Christians. And after that, I beheld. And I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne. And the number is given right there. There. Okay. In the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Um, right there it is. And then you have chapter 6. Right here, the white horse rider is unleashed by Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, Jesus Christ unleashes him. So is there any proof that the... Christians are in heaven before the Antichrist is revealed? Yes, absolutely. I just showed it to you. I mean, it's just simple. You know, it's not really that difficult. But here's my point. Okay. Here's the very important point that you need to take away from this whole thing. The mystery of iniquity doth already work. The spirit of Antichrist is already here. Are we seeing it right now? Yes, we are seeing the spirit of Antichrist right now. These people are so blinded. It's just so crazy. All right. Um, only he who now let us will let until he be taken out of the way. It is our job to hinder this system, to speak out against this system. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's it's right there. But now let's look at a couple things here. You say, what what is this? Uh, what's this thing about the spirit of Antichrist? OK, well, let's check that out. Let's go down here to first John chapter. Uh, three, I think, is the one. I'm trying to think here. Oh, brother. So I had this written out in my notes and stuff, and I, I didn't take it with me. <laughs> Chapter 2, I think it is. Okay, here it is. Yep, sorry about that. First John chapter 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists. Again, Antichrist shall come. It is singular in reference. Okay, it's talking about the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, whatever you want to call him. Um, but even now, are there many antichrists, right? Are there many antichrists out there? People that are against Jesus Christ? Yes. People that are fake um, Christians? Yes. There's lots of them. And how do you know what they are? They went out from us, verse 19, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Okay. This is so key. This verse right here. Verse 19, they went out from us. How many times have we seen fake, you know, Christian people and they go out from us? They're not of us. Okay. Um, very, very simple. All right. But then we see a test for Antichrist right here in verse 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. And of course, the Anti-Jew people will say, well, see, the Jews, the Jews do this. This is what the Jews do. 
you know, the, the Jews, they deny that Jesus is the Christ. Yes, they do. That's why it's the time of Jacob's trouble that's coming up. Okay, the Lord's going to have, he has a controversy with the Jewish people in Israel right now. And uh, it's going to be pretty rough for him. But uh, look at verse 23. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Why? Because they're the same being. Okay. Uh, understand that one. Um, but uh, we'll go down to chapter 4 because here's the next test for the spirit of Antichrist. I think we're all aware of what's been going on with this. Um, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Again, the spirit of Antichrist there. Right? If you go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, there. Um, the mystery of iniquity doth already work right there. It's the spirit of Antichrist. It's already happening. It's all, we can already see it just as plain as day, right? First John chapter four. Um, you know, again here, uh, this is that spirit of Antichrist. Okay. So you see the thing that you know, the way that you can tell who is a spirit of Antichrist, who has that is if they try to say that Jesus has come or whatever else, they mess with this whole thing right here is come in the flesh. OK, now let me just say it again for the people out there that don't understand the significance of this whole thing. Why does the King James Bible say is come in the flesh? Um, well, because when you say is come in the flesh, then that is referring to an eternal God, okay, has come. I mean, Buddha has come in the flesh. Muhammad has come in the flesh. The Pope has, you know, Pope John Paul II has come in the flesh. They're not eternal. When you say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, that means he's alive right now. He is come in the flesh in the past. He is come in the flesh in the Bible. And he is come in the flesh right now. And he will be coming in the flesh in the future. He is in the flesh in the future. All right. Um, very, very important. And I mean, and it's what the King James Bible says. But right away you get this, you, you bring this thing out and right away people come out along and they start saying, you know, well, well wait a second. And they'll look through the Bible trying to find something to, de to debunk this. Just the plain English here. What, what word says God was manifest in the flesh? Well, it's, it's talking about a past tense event in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Certainly. The context there is it's God was manifest in the flesh. It's talking about something that happened in the past. This is not. This is a statement that's saying Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And that this is a test for the spirit of Antichrist. And notice it says there in verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit. Don't believe everybody. Okay? You have to try them. Try the spirits, whether they are of God. Try them. Put them on trial. Put me on trial, right? If anybody, I'll tell you this right now, offer a challenge to anybody out there. If you can find any video where I've ever said, Jesus has come in the flesh, and I'm looking at that passage right there, please link me to that video where I said that, right? And I will publicly denounce my video. I'll take the video down and whatever else. And I will publicly say, confessing with my mouth, I will say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Or again, you see this thing, and these guys, they'll, they'll come out and they'll say, uh, well, I, I hereby confess, and they'll write this thing out. We'll see. We can't tell your spirit, though. When you just write something out, anybody can copy and paste stuff and whatever else. That doesn't mean anything, you know. And the controversy right now with this issue of David Daniels um, brought to my attention uh, Brother Matthew Landau and, and uh confronted him on it and whatever. I mean, he's in a church building, which there's a major issue there, but he's in a church building and he plainly says, he's looking at the text and he says, has come in the flesh. And what does David Daniels do? He comes out and he puts on his Facebook page that, you know, I, you know, and he, and he writes it out and, and says, don't believe anything that anybody says differently, you know, but there's, there's a, a lot of problems with that. First of all, you're just writing it. 
That, that's not the context here. It's confessing with your mouth. That's what's going on. That's why it's so important. If there's a spirit. We have to we have to try to try the spirit that's in you, right? That's why people have a hard time saying this, and they'll try to change it. No, it's not important and whatever else. And how hard would it have been for David Daniels just to simply say, hey, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Humble yourself and say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake when I was there. You know, I understand when you're reading the new versions, you get your mind jumbled a little bit. Just come out and say it. It's what the scripture says. And you say, well, it's just one place. Second John, verse 7 for many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. So here's the whole point. Right now, we have a system whereby we can see the antichrist movement is, is really upon us. It's They're really crashing things and whatever else. It's just getting ridiculous. I mean, you can't go out in public in most places now without... The covering on, which is a joke, total joke. I could say more on that, but um, they're 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 doing all this stuff, you know. And you you can't do this, and you can't leave your home, and you you can't talk to people because you could transmit the virus. <laughs> it's just insane. And so we see that the movement of Antichrist. But here's the important thing: we have to be ultra careful who we are listening to and who we are talking to, because you see. There, I, I literally just heard a channel that I watch occasionally. It's a uh, survival Russia. I watched I watched a few of his videos and things because he has some good stuff on northern type of boots and you know skis and snowshoes and whatever else. And I saw he had a video about what's going on in Russia, and he literally said that he was contacted by YouTube recently, and uh, and literally I'll just do this here. Here's the video, um, and at the beginning, I'm not I'm not just endorsing this channel either, by the way. Um, but at the beginning, he literally says that YouTube contacted him and told him that his channel is safe, so he's allowed to talk about COVID-19. Oh boy. Um, so in other words. Uh, your channel now is deemed to be safe, and so you're qualified to speak about COVID-19. Hmm, <laughs> that's kind of a problem, All right? They're going to censor free speech, and so you're going to have to be really careful who you're talking to or who you're listening to, excuse me, who you listen to uh, in the future because they're, they're censoring speech and everything else. Um, so. You know, you might get around people that claim to be Christians and a very simple thing, put them through the Antichrist spirit test. Um, just show them the scriptures and say, do you confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? I'd like to hear you say that. Simple. The Bible says we're supposed to do it. So um, we are supposed to hinder, um, to let, as the Bible says, we are supposed to hinder this whole system of antichrist um you know and slow things down by continually exposing this wicked stuff and just saying hey you know what about this what about that um so just wanted to make a mention about that and um go through those scriptures uh, we have to fight brethren and you know i did another sermon which didn't turn out all that great but i will be talking about this more in the future a lot of the brethren have discussed, you know, what is going to be the final dividing line? Because we got the Bible version issue. We got the Godhead Trinity issue. We have, you know, a dispensationalism. We have, you know, church building, if you're still going to church buildings and whatever else. We have all these different issues that divide people. And you get people that militantly stand for something that's not in Scripture. And you say, uh-oh, there's a problem there. Um, and we've talked about what will be the final dividing line. And I believe that the answer to that is conformity versus non-conformity. Um, we're going to be called upon to not conform to a lot of things that are going to come in the future. And uh, that's going to transition into the time of Jacob's trouble because the non-conformist Christians that took the stands for the King James Bible, um, they're going to be leaving. And the people who want to conform 
uh, to the system are going to be staying. Okay. So I have said that. Um, real quick here, I want to show a couple of things. This is um, worldometers.info, the coronavirus page. You can see here coronavirus cases now um, 1.8 or 1,827,147. Um, a lot of you know cases there. That's 112,410. That's a lot of people. You know, that is definitely a lot of people. There's no no question about that. A lot of people have died from this thing. But again, are they giving them nutritional health? Are they giving them, you know, are they telling them how to stay healthy and whatever else? Are these older people that have pre pre existing health conditions that are dying because they get this thing? And what about the recovered number? Are they talking about that? No. So one in four people that gets the coronavirus recovers from it. As I discussed in another thing, it, was, it, was, it wasn't even 100,000 just a few weeks ago. Now it's 416,153 that have recovered. Is the news media telling you about that? Active cases, 50,691 are critical, serious for critical. Only 4% are serious, in other words. 96% are in mild condition. You know? I mean, closed cases, people that are discharged, you know, and it's going up here right as, as springtime's coming and, and things. Of course, yeah, springtime, the flu always goes up. So, yeah, but uh, here's a video I want to play real quick with uh, Stephen Andersnake. Oh, and by the way, some of the people who criticized me for, for uh, shutting things down, you know, they don't have to worry about it because they don't even have a problem in Northern Penn. You know, I saw Brian Denlinger was uh, criticizing me today. Yeah, he's already been in, he lives in compliance. He's in, he's in compliance 24-7, 365 because it's him preaching to a camera. There's nobody, He's he's been on live stream only since before this disease had ever been thought of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I don't, I checked, I don't have any videos of it, but right here I am in this video warning about Mike Hoggard on eternal security. Um, this was when I lived down in, in Pennsylvania, Eldred PA, and we were going to Country Chapel Baptist Church. I had actually just gotten back from attending the church there where I was preaching in the pulpit and actually had control of the church different times when the pastor was away. So I was assistant. I was basically an assistant pastor at that point in time, preaching in a Baptist church. And there were, I do have videos. They're on my external hard drive now. I, I deleted them, but um, you know there were videos of me preaching in a church building uh, seven years ago. So for Anderson to say basically uh, that you know I've been preaching to a camera for ten years or whatever else, uh, well, no, seven years ago I was in a Baptist church as well as a Baptist preacher. Um, so. Yeah, that doesn't work too good. But um, I do videos, preaching and teaching in the medium of video. Okay. What we do in terms of meeting with people and, and whatever else, I don't record that. I don't record, um, I don't record uh, going out and witnessing to people. Okay. If I'm out and I, I get into a conversation with somebody, I don't get the camera out right away and, and try to record the thing or something else. So, again, these, these guys have rocks for brains, you know, um, he's talking to a camera. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm teaching the Bible and putting it online for people. That's not what I do for my own personal life, you know, uh, you know, and I, I love the thing that I say, I, I do video ministry. They say, there's no scripture for that. OK, and where's the scripture at for uh, church buildings and going to church? You know. Yeah, um, but this is an interesting thing here. Here's my live stream I did that got Anderson all triggered. And uh, down here, I thought this was quite interesting. I pinned this comment. Um, USA Pilot 78, um, it says, you want to know why these 501c3 pastors are selling out? Money. Trump's Paycheck Protection Program covers them and they get paid if they are good. We always knew that they would sell out. We always knew they would sell out. They did. Donald J. Trump at Real Donald Trump, 219 p.m., April 4th, 2020. Quote, the Paycheck Protection Program is up and running. The program is open to nonprofits as well. 
said banks be sure to sign up our great religious and veteran organizations that need help all right and i checked it out it is it is the real deal right there it is i did a little search right there it is so he's you know this commenter is right the new Cha paycheck protection program uh, permits loans directly to any nonprofit organization defined to include tax exempt organizations described in internal revenue code section 501c3 including religious institutions thus religious institutions are eligible for loans during the covered period of february 15th 2020 through Jan june 30th 2020 as long as the organization does not have more than 500 employees and was operational as of march 1st 2020. The CARES Act makes religious institutions subject to the SBA's affiliation rules in determining size, meaning that the organization must take into account the number of its own employees, as well as any related organizations, whether nonprofit or for profit. These affiliation rules are, and regulations are far reaching and complex, and careful analysis of them is required. <laughs> careful analysis, yeah. Uh, in other words, government oversight. Religious institutions can use the loan proceeds for certain payroll costs rent utilities, mortgage interest, and interest on other debt obligations incurred before February 15th, 2020. In addition, these organi organizations are eligible to have such loans forgiven, effectively turning the loans into grants if additional requirements are met. And um, another interesting thing here, he says, he keeps his church employees mask makers on the payroll and he can get those government lo loans forgiven Loan forgiveness under the Paycheck Protection Program. 501c3 and 501c19 nonprofit organizations are eligible for forgiveness up to the full physical principal amount of the loan and any accrued interest if the borrower uses the loan for qualifying purposes and employee and compensation levels are maintained. So there you go. Excellent information. Thank you for sharing that. And it was very good information. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> but, uh, just crazy, absolutely crazy what Anderson is doing. And, you know, it's, it's funny because, um, you know, you have this Stephen Anderson yeah, here, yeah. you know, and he's in this little church building down there. He's 501c3, and he lives in, you know, the city, basically, Phoenix, Arizona, or Tempe, or wherever he lives. I don't really care. And, uh, and he's just going along with what the government says. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm, you know, up in the middle of nowhere and we can make our own food and grow our own food and whatever, you know, somewhat not fully into farming and whatever else yet. But, you know, and yet he's a post-tribber and I am a pre-tribber, you know, figure that one out. You know, I mean, if I really believed I was going into the time of Jacob's trouble, I would just be I wouldn't even be online. I'd be a fanatic. I'd be just building underground bunkers and the whole thing, you know, but this guy claims that he's a post-tribber and he's going to reject the mark and whatever else and yet he's just right along with what the government tells him to do you know and again if i was if i was a if i had a church building someplace i wouldn't shut it for anything you know i mean if there's a lot of snow or something obviously well people couldn't get to it or whatever but you know good night government comes along you need to shut down your church no no um, the government has no right to tell me what to do with worshiping the Lord, but apparently they do with Anderson. So, but just wanted to do um, a real quick little um, live stream. Um, I don't know. Does anybody want to join the live stream thing? I can post the link down there and anybody wants to join. Um would anybody be interested in just having a discussion about anything? I will. I'll put the uh, link to the live stream thing in the chat area. There you go. If anybody wants to join, you can feel free to. Totally open to joining the live stream. I don't know how it'll work or not. I've never done this before, but, you know, we'll see how it works.
Brother Brian, do you think this is part of the end times? Absolutely. Yeah, it's setting up the whole thing. Uh, the economy is what's really, they're, they're really going after the economy. The coronavirus thing is, um, it's just part of it. It's just covering up the fact that the economy is collapsing. So, Okay, Brother Jacob, can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Um. Okay. Let's see if I can get that. Um. How in the world do I get that uh, text there? I'm trying to. Uh, I don't know how to get the text out of that thing. See if we can watch that video real quick. Are you looking for it, brother? What are you talking about? I didn't. The, uh, the um, brother here, the, the thing of the David Daniels passed the Antichrist spirit test here. Oh, it might be better for you to, for you to do it in your end because my my mic setup is kind of weird. Okay, um, we'll do this one here. Following after Jesus Christ. Hey. Hello. Okay, I'm not sure how to get that one thing here. Um. <laughs> hey, what's going on, brothers? How you doing? Yeah, I'm sorry. I got to do the dot. I got like horrible internet connection where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yep. Okay. Yeah, sorry that I had to put like uh, headphones in to do the the live stream stuff. <laughs> The, the little dot to keep it from uh yeah Locking up and everything yeah yep okay there you are but, but, uh, i'm real <laughs> it just it, it lags like really bad yeah i got it what state are you from uh ohio up here oh. uh like right in between cincinnati and dayton okay no, I've actually but I've seen a lot of your uh, your videos and stuff too. Is um, actually been really really helpful. So thank you. Well, praise the Lord. Yeah. So how are things going um, out there? I mean, you know, how are you it's um, kind of like half and half. Um, half the people don't care, and then the the other half are just. Uh, whatever the television tells them to do or the radio tells them to do, they do it. And, mm -hmm. you know, most of the, the churches around here, <clears throat> to be quite honest, a lot of them are actually not too bad, but like, Hey, you just got into the 501 C3. That's, uh, that's their big thing. You know what I mean? Like, uh, they'll, they'll talk a good game, but then as soon as it comes down to actually taking a stand, for either Jesus Christ or the government, they go for that paycheck every single time. And it's really kind of sad. Like there's uh, more home churches or more home groups, or from what I've come across is more people actually fellowshipping online than actually going to brick and mortar churches anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Absolutely. Hmm. Yeah. Somebody else. I'm sorry. Somebody else wants to join here. So Samuel says. Hi, Brian. Hey. Hi. Hi, Hi guys. Samuel. Is that um on the top right? Is that Jacob? Is that brother Jacob? Yes. 
Yeah, I, I remember watching your video on um, Jesus Christ is Come on the Flesh. That was the recent one I watched. So, yeah, I just found your channel. Nice, praise the Lord. Yeah. Wait, Brian, um, I have some questions for you. I have some questions for you. Okay. Um, the first one is, yeah, like how did you get into that um, off-grid lifestyle with like building a home and like, you know, living fully off-grid and stuff like that? Because, you know, I'm 17 now and I'm happy that the Lord has shown me that before, you know, I'm at a stage where I'm ready to like move into my own place and stuff. So like what sort of advice could you give like, for that sort of lifestyle because it's not easy i live in the city obviously so how do i get out of that you know you know what i mean mm -hmm. um <clears throat> well uh it's it's something i've been into for a long time um it's it's kind of a big story but uh you know little boy as a little boy we would go to my uncle's cabin up in the mountains and i was raised back in the woods and everything so it was just something I always dreamed of having my own land that I could build on and everything. But I've been in off grid situations in Costa Rica, Honduras, um, Alaska, Montana. So I've seen a lot of different things. Um, but my advice to you, if you're, you know, as a younger man living in the city, um, is just simply, uh, if somebody else wants to join here. There we go. There we go. Hi. Hi. Hello, Hello brothers. Hello brothers. Hi. My name is Hi. my name is Artem. I am from from Ukraine. Oh, oh, that's great. Ukraine. That's great. Yes. So first, What's going on, brother? Uh, uh, in Ukraine, uh, we have also this uh, quarantine, and uh, uh, of course, uh, there are there are a lot of people who believe uh, this uh, uh, this holy baloney crisis, but. I, of course, I don't believe believe it. I I know that this is a hoax, so to speak. And uh, <clears throat> uh, on the streets, uh, first time when they announced uh, this crisis, uh, people uh, were somewhat scared, and uh, uh, really streets were empty. But now uh, today is uh, Sunday, and uh, actually. Well, I live in uh, in, the, in in a town uh, on the river, and uh, a lot of people are walking uh, on the bank on the beach. Uh, not a lot, but quite uh, with uh, with their children. Uh, people are fishing, so there are some who do not comply to this to this whole thing. Mm, that's good. That's good. <laughs> and. Uh, Actually, Brian, Brian, I uh, first I uh, uh, in YouTube I found I uh, first time I looked uh, at your video when you announced um, uh, the name change of your channel, and uh, uh, I don't remember how this video how you named this video, but you uh, spoke about uh, your channel, how it will work uh, after Husky 983, yes, and uh, you rename it into uh, KJV Video Mixes, yes. And I really like what you said, and since then, it was uh, a little more than one, one year before I started listening to you, and uh, uh, often, often I listen to you. <laughs> Regarding churches, uh, I started. Uh, <laughs> I started uh, um, with charismatic charismatic movement. In charismatic movement, uh, when I entered the uh, university, so when my my classmate uh, uh, was a former drug addict uh, who. Uh, was freed uh, from this his addiction through through this church, where I spent uh, some three years uh, in this community. Uh, and uh, uh, in Kiev, it, it was in Kiev, in the capital of Ukraine, Kiev, you know, maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, wow. we have a lot of conferences, uh, and a lot of false teachers came there, uh, including Benny Hinn, you know, Benny Hinn, Benny. <laughs> And of course, uh, 
it was uh, it was some uh, Todd Bentley, you know, Todd Bentley, some degenerate preacher uh, with uh, a lot of tattoos, and uh, with uh, his team was one uh, one uh, Ukrainian girl who immigrated to United States, and uh, I I have got during this con conference that lasted some about one week, uh, I. Uh, Got got acquainted with her, and uh, told told her that I was interested in, in uh, reading the Bible in English language, and she promised to uh, send me one of, as she told me, the best translation, the message. <laughs> so next next uh, ten years, I really uh, spend uh, spend reading the message, and uh, when I start reading. Of course, I uh, started to see all this movement from another point of view, and uh, a lot of things became suspicious to me. And eventually, I uh, I quit this congregation after, especially after uh, portion in, in, Corinthians, in Corinthians where Paul says um, about the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devils. You remember this portion? Uh, and in this translation, it says. When people uh, reduce God to something they can use or control, uh, uh, escape the company as fast as you can. So I ex escaped the company. <laughs> but of course, in, in uh, the next 10 years, I spent re reading the, this message. Uh, and it was a uh, good training in English language. Um, and uh, after some... Uh, after some crisis and some dramatic events uh, that started in 2015. I ch changed uh, to King James in this version. Uh, and I can't, I can't even read in the Russian language because I, because every time I read, it is, it is my mother, mother tongue, but every time I, I turn to this book, uh, I see a lot of out of these discrepancies, and I can't really take it as uh, the word, as the the word of God to myself. So actually, mm. what was the crisis? I uh, during this crisis, I um, find out how 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 satanic was this message translation, how satanic was, and uh, I became afraid, and I started again to uh, visit some churches, some Baptist churches. I uh, at that time I already listened to John MacArthur sermons a lot of them, and uh, with those Baptists I uh, discussed a lot of this topic uh, of John MacArthur sermons, and uh, I listened it in English language, of course, and uh, they also uh, they also dreamed about listening to John, John MacArthur. It was like his, the, like their favorite, favorite preacher, so to say. And uh, mm, actually, the question the question for me was, no, please listen to me. The, the very important, I want to say. The question for me was, uh, can God forgive me? Because, uh, OK, I was re reading this satanic Bible perversion, and I realized uh, like I, I was convicted really I realized uh, the pressure of my sins my former sins and sins and uh, I I was uh, looking for a way for forgiveness of sins and and uh, I, I once I spoke with some uh, servants in this Baptist church and told them okay Mm, especially after listening to Mark Arthur, Mark Arthur's sermon about uh, the tale of two sorrows, this is this name, about uh, Peter and Judas. He like kind of uh, uh, compared uh, the two, two lives, two betrayals, so to say. And I, I was hunting for um, re reconciliation with the Lord because I felt that I betrayed him and... Uh, those people told me, okay, I told them, okay, uh, is it possible that God will never forgive me? And uh, some of them told me, yes, it is possible. 
and I, I, I ask him, okay, if uh, God will not forgive me, then I go to hell. So how can I live? How 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 can I live further? And he told me, relax, live, live like you live, <laughs> you know. So uh, it was it was really hard depression during one year. And after this year, I decided to uh, leave my town, and I ended up in uh, uh, Orthodox monastery in uh, in west of Ukraine. So I spent uh, one year and uh, four months in this Orthodox monastery. I was totally confused. I in, I was totally confused. I didn't know where where up and down, you know. <laughs> And uh, eventually, I asked my mother to bring uh, to send me my MP3 player, and I started listening again to Orthodox authors. Then uh, resumed to John MacArthur. And after one year, for ma four months, I listened to his uh, series of sermons about uh, Roman Catholicism, and I I saw that. Uh, it, it actually it was the same uh, Rus Russian Orthodoxy Roman Catholicism uh, all basic uh, doctrines are the same and what uh, became the turning point in this uh, my journey uh, uh, in this my search of forgiveness uh, after all those uh, after all those uh, ceremonies after all those confessions, uh, I remembered what I listened to long before uh, in some audio Bible that I downloaded from internet. Mm -hmm. I remembered uh, uh, f first uh, chapter of Revelation where uh, he tells us uh, he where it is written that uh, glory, glory and strength to Christ who loved us, who blood washed our sins from our lives. Yes, I remember this. And I understand that uh, uh, it is not, uh, it, it isn't point in ceremonies, in uh, liturgies, in those uh, sacrifices that they do, but uh, there's a point when we believe uh, in actual sacrifice that was uh, accomplished 2000 years ago and the uh, real blood that was shed, the blood of Christ that was shed 2000 years ago. And uh, I was uh, uh, I begin to understand that this is I was on my on my road to forgiveness so to speak to salvation and uh, good. praise the Lord praise the Lord and after yeah. after yeah. after one year and four months I just uh, saw some uh, some corruption some perversion even more and I quit this monastery. <laughs> and continue continue to work and returns first uh, first uh, went to some uh, another city then came to my own town and now work like uh, have have a job now now of course uh, we have with this quarantine uh, actually it is interrupted but anyway. Praise God, yes. Yeah. Yes. It's good to hear that. It's good to hear that. Um, um, we're going to have to probably... We're going to have to probably... I'm getting a weird echo here. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll just have to... We'll just have to... There's a couple people, a couple waiting, people here. waiting here. So okay. I'll have to, so I'll have to say, goodbye say goodbye to each of you. Each of you. So, or not yeah, each of you. Yeah, just say So if you have everybody, everybody in the room, they're not talking. It won't do it at the end of that All right, so. All right, so. Goodbye, so Arno. Goodbye, Arno. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, your for what she said there, testimony. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, following me after Jesus Christ, what, what was it that you said? The the echo. Yeah. If, uh, like when someone's talking, like how we got headsets on, it uh, it won't echo. But if they're like going through the microphone computer, 
or the computer microphone, it echo. And then a lot of times too, if they're using the camera and the microphone, it'll lag and have that little echo thing. That's why I was muting while everyone was sitting there talking. Uh, okay, that's it. All right. Um, um, so I heard him say something about uh, MacArthur, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know if you ever. Uh, looked into the Zohar, the Talmud at all, because I've seen some of the videos you did before, but um, it's like I was sitting here one day, and it was just auto-playing on Sermon Index, and John MacArthur came up, and he actually quoted the Zohar and called it the Holy Zohar. Um, after I did some research into it, that's uh, Kabbalistic like witchcraft. I mean, kind of goes along with the, the Kundalini, in my opinion. I didn't, I'm not like bashing John MacArthur, but you know, I've in the last few months, uh, I've after I actually started looking into what is Kabbalah and Zohar and the Talmud and you know, some of this other stuff, and like, uh, there's this huge uh, messianic movement or Hebrew roots movement mm -hmm. going through here in Ohio, um, even like Chabad. Is I didn't know what any of that stuff was until uh, about a year ago, and after I started looking into it, it's like a a cult is the only is the only nice word I can think of to say about it. But uh, I didn't know if you had noticed anything on that because I, I know you've really been outspoken on a new apostolic reformation in the NAR. It's a uh, yeah, I've ran into a lot of brothers and sisters who are still trying to come out of that because that's like another whole cult in itself and i'm not saying that to be mean to anybody who may have fallen into those things but it's just mm -hmm. it like three years ago when i first really started seeking after christ the two things that i came over the two big problems i came across was i didn't you know i didn't even know what the denomination was <laughs> and started going church to church and then found out that it was in some churches, they didn't actually encourage you to have a personal relationship with Christ. It was, uh, come here, I speak, you listen, I say, you do, you know what I mean? And it, you know, mm -hmm. don't ask questions. Mm -hmm. And then when you would point out, because uh, the first one I came across was the prosperity gospel. Um, a guy was using the term, uh, what was it? Uh, Re Jacob Rest or Jacob Wrestling, the angel before he was named Israel, using that as a story on why people should tithe more. And I was like, I was like, dude, I literally just read that two nights ago, and that has nothing to do with money. Nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's yeah. just, uh, the amount of false teaching and gospel is uh, almost an endless flood, it seems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I, I haven't really looked into the Zohar a whole lot um, or the Talmud or whatever else. I just kind of avoid that stuff because I just I, I know it's satanic type of thing. Yeah. Um, it's it's part of the reason why God's you know wrath is going to be hitting the, you know, the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. They have rejected the New Testament. They rejected Jesus Christ and they've gotten all this extra biblical stuff in there. So sad, but. The Zohar is basically a, a commentary, and from the me looking into it myself, um, you, you remember in Exodus when they were going through, and Moses had put the uh, bronze serpent up on the stick. Mm -hmm. All right, we know that to be uh, a type and shadow of the forecoming of Jesus Christ and taking you know the sin, the punishment for all of us, right? A lot of these Kabbalists, they actually worship the bronze serpent, or they they call God a holy serpent, and that's what I was like, kind of liking it to uh, New Age or Kundalini, because it's uh, it's in Freemasonry, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of other stuff. Because you know, before I came to Christ, I had uh, dabbled in witchcraft, which I repented of and still repent to this day. Like it's one of those things I wish I never even had messed with, but a lot of the, all that stuff 
all kind of goes together. And like you just said, I, I do believe that that's what we're going into is the time of Jacob's trouble. And uh, I do. I hope they repent. You know, it says a remnant will. So mm-hmm. you know, come what may. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got a bunch of other people lined up here, so I'm going to have to. I wish I could just have everybody just talking. No, things, but this. I appreciate it, brother. And I just wanted to say thank you personally, too, because, uh, you know, <laughs> there, there's not a whole lot of people out there that really are just actually going line by line, precept upon precept, and actually going through and showing people the context in which the scriptures are written. You know what I mean? And I've never seen you take one and say, ah, uh, this does say it the Lord, this is what it says. You know what I mean? Like you actually go through and you say, look, this is what it says here. Read here before, read here after. It's cross reference here. You always leave. Uh, well, you show your work. So, <laughs> but praise the Lord. Hey, God bless, brother. And uh, yeah. I'm going to drop out so someone else can get in here. And th- much love to everybody. Yep. Thank you. Wait, Brian. Yes, Samuel. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's fine. It's, I've also got another thing I've got to ask. I don't know which okay. verse it is yet. Yeah? It might be Galatians chapter five. I might be wrong, but you know where where it says um, it lists a bunch of things like naughty, feminine, or idolatry, stuff like that, will enter the mm-hmm. kingdom of God. Um, mm-hmm. is, that, is that referring to the millennial kingdom? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it's, it's so if you Go ahead. Well, well, does that mean that there'll be Christians that won't go into the millennial kingdom? Or is it just talking about lost people? Well, I think that the kingdom of God can be said two different ways. In Romans, um, in the book of Romans, I can't try to think of a reference right now, but it's it's uh, uh, Romans chapter fourteen, I think it is. It talks about peace and joy and in the Holy Ghost um, being the kingdom of God. Um, but I, I would say that the kingdom of God in that in that reference is, you know, that that there are people that. Are not going to get any kind of millennial rule because you know they they're not going to be able to rule and reign with Jesus Christ because they didn't suffer. I say it that way. And also, you see how you say um, in the millennial reign it will be like works based salvation. So, mm-hmm. so does that mean lost people can still get saved during that one thousand year period? Yeah, I think so. Mm. I do. People that are born in that time period, yeah. It's it's so, it's one of those things. It's not. I'm not real. It's it's yeah. a future dispensation. I can't speak 100 percent for sure on it. It's stuff that's going to be revealed in the future. And one more thing. And one more thing. Yeah. Um, okay. Could, could, like, how did you overcome like video game like addiction? Because that's something that I need to get out. Um, and I know you, I, I remember watching a, a sermon you did, and you said you struggled with that for like a long time. So mm-hmm. how did you eventually get that like out of your life? Well. Um, um, it was actually when I got married because it, it kind of changed my responsibilities. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I pretty much, it was a little bit more under control, but it was, it was still there. I was still struggling with it. But then, you know, when I got married and I had a wife to take care of and provide for and everything else uh, that really did change it. Uh, by the way, Jonah, I'll see you there. I'll be getting to you next year. But um, uh, the, the off grid lifestyle kind of, kind of keys into this whole thing of, mm-hmm. Um, getting away from video games. Um, it, it's just something I would, I'd recommend, you know, get into camping if we ever can leave the cities again, you know, <laughs> or if, yeah. you know, if you're able to um, get into camping, get into, you know, going out hiking, get maybe into fishing and whatever else, just outdoor activities. And then that will transition into, um, you'll get familiar with, with being outside of the city and eventually, you know, get some land or, or whatever else. Yeah. Um, well, thank, but then thanks that, so much, man. Yeah, not a problem. I really, appre- I really appreciate your work and I'm, and I'm always praying for you and, and your videos as well. Like you're one of the very few, like really radical Bible believing Christians on YouTube right now. And there's not many at all. Like some of your videos where mm-hmm. you're really like going in and like, I respect that because it really shows that like Christians aren't just like softy, softy, you know what I mean? Like it shows that, you know, we're, we're also radical, we're not to be messed with as well. And, you know, mm-hmm. I really respect that. And also what your video on um, the interracial marriage thing as well, that was really, that was really convicting because that also, that really helped me. I'm really thinking of, you know, going back to, you know, to where I come from, which is in Africa. And then maybe through that, I can be able to start an off-grid lifestyle, which will be 
very helpful as well. So yeah, I really appreciate yeah. that. And I just really, please just continue to make those videos. Please just continue coming out with sermons. I know you're busy and stuff, but they're really, really helpful, especially the one that you did on, um, the one about the rapture recently, which you said was like the, the future of the bride of Christ. Very mm. encouraging right now. Like that's what that's we really need. We really need to continue just encouraging each other because it's not easy at the moment. It really is. Huh? But yeah. the good thing about quarantine is that, and like the thing of, because my college got cancelled, which is very good. And that gave me time to actually spend more time with the Lord. So, you know, that that's also uh, something that I took as well. But yeah. Yeah. Great, yeah. Fa thank Lord. you. And I just pray for you, your wife and um, Oliver as well. Oliver's so, Oliver's funny. He's, he's an absolute, <laughs> he is a clown, honestly. He is too funny. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I'll see you soon. Yeah. Nice talking to you. Okay. Bye. See ya. Okay. Hi, Jonah. Hey, hey, Brian. What's how you how you doing? <laughs> good, good. Uh, um, I'm gonna. I'll keep it short just because I know you got probably other people in here. Um, but I've um, just keep it really brief intro. Um, I'm from Washington, Pennsylvania, and um, so far, virus stuff here this isn't like too bad. I guess. I mean, it's just like most people just stay indoors, mm -hmm. and if you're, if they see other people out, they just kind of go to the other side of the street. In a sense, so it's not like horrible but i'm still going out and doing anything i need to do but uh Good. um i originally found your channel like back in like 2012 2013 and uh been like following along since then and uh you're probably like, you're probably the reason why i'm out of my life today just just guy was like part of like church systems and stuff like that and i finally got like out of it and i just been like trying to do a lot of self-study and just like that but um uh, I still struggle with a lot of things, which uh, which really gets me uh, flustered, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, and I feel like even though I've like, been like watching and like learning and things like that, my knowledge is still very little. Like I can't, I still feel, can't like pull things out. What I'm trying to say is, anyway, um, there's a, uh, um, I don't know if there's anything like that in Maine going on, but um, in June, our city here is going to be like having its first pride march i guess and like i really wanted to uh like i don't know like go out and like try to like talk to people and like i don't know like i don't know if like preaching against it would be the right thing it's just like just because i don't know if i'm like i don't know if i'm like ready to do that yet and like i got like um i have i, I don't know if, i guess friends sort of because i was kind of actually a couple years ago i actually was sort of in that system too in a way mm -hmm. Um, and I thank goodness for my mother and like watch and you did a thing on that too, um, got me out of it. And, um, I've been trying to get this person that I know who's in it, like to kind of like wake up to like what's going on with that whole situation. Like I gave, um, I gave them, I gave them a Bible that I had King James and like, I try to bring up like scripture, like anything in attempt, like we're like, like hang out and stuff like that but i don't know if i'm getting through or not but um is there any like any like thing you can like any uh, advice that you can maybe part with like uh i don't know if it's just like like oh like preaching to like a large since i'd be like a large group of people like if that march thing happens i don't know like is there any like thing i can like prep to kind of like <laughs> For that <laughs> yeah i well i would say uh give out uh, gospel tracks you know find some good gospel tracks um people that are involved in sodomy are sinners yeah uh, jesus christ died for sinners but you just got to get people to realize that um i i do have a, um i don't know how you say it a burden or whatever else but uh, uh the sodomite movement is going to be one of the things that the antichrist system fights against the radical uh, Pre-Vatican II Catholics um, are going to really just slaughter people that are into the LGBTQ, whatever the stuff is right now. Yeah. And um, I think that people need, to, you know, if you can help them to understand that and just say to your friend or whatever, if he's if he's gay, and, and just say, hey, you know what? Look at some of the stuff that's happening here. Um, you think that that people are for what you're doing and, and whatever the LGBTQ system, they're not. Um, I mean, the, the AIDS epidemic right now that the media doesn't even cover it anymore. And, and they're just, there's a lot of them dying 
and they and in that whole system and you know steven anderson perfect example of that um he hates people that are into sodomy and blasts them on youtube all the time banned in 34 countries and yet they leave him on see there's that radical group of people that want to kill people that are into that movement and just maybe help your friend to realize hey you're in serious danger here in the future and right now it looks like the world's for what you're doing but when the antichrist system shows up it is going to be super bad really really bad um you need to be saved you know is what i would say to them and just say you, you need you need to take this stuff seriously um you know it's it's not going to be an accepted thing in the future and a lot of people in that movement are going to get slaughtered so does that answer your question i i think so yeah because it's um because actually like i'm going to say i'll say she just because well biologically she is a female but like is trying to like is put the t in the lgbt essentially mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. just like I don't know, and it's, I'm like trying so hard because like I feel bad for her because it's like, um, like I that's kind of that's how I was like, like a couple years ago I was like doing the opposite obviously, but it's just like, like she doesn't she it's like a temporary thing because it's like I know they're I kind of understand the mindset of it because um, mm -hmm. they think whatever whatever bothered them in the past like it it's like they see it at least how i said which i think most of them do um they see it as like a um like a rebirth in a sense it's like kind of like whatever happened to them that's like it doesn't happen because it's not like them anymore and it's just like it's so temporary because like you realize that it's like um oh, what's the word i'm thinking of it's just like i don't know it's just i can't think of it right now uh, but anyway um one of one other th question do you think it was i wish uh, i commented on one of your uh, uh live streams from a couple weeks ago about um uh like learning languages and stuff like that and i don't know do you think is, is that like really worthwhile to do like language learning in general like i don't know because mm -hmm. i just i mean I've, i'm really interested in doing it but it's just i didn't know if it'd be like down the long run is it like worth it <laughs> yeah yeah, there's um, actually one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in First Corinthians chapter 12 is the thing of um, learning different tongues. The Bible calls tongues and languages as kind of synonymous. Um, so, yeah, learning different languages is is great. Absolutely. I think that's a, a very uh, good thing to study. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, I won't uh, I won't take up any more time. But uh, I really, really appreciate for you giving me a chance to like speak on here. It was uh, sure very, very, very helpful. <laughs> yeah, not a problem. <laughs> right, uh, nice hearing, um, nice hearing from you. Yeah, you too. I'll see you on your next uh, uh, either YouTube video or a, a live stream or something. <laughs> Sounds good. I right, think. Okay. Put the William Zaroski. Did I get that right, William? Uh, hi, Brian. Hi. Hi, it's like I'm over here in like uh, southeast Michigan. Okay. And I got to do a lot. I enjoy a lot of your videos there, pretty uh, straight to the point, and there's on scripture. Praise the Lord. I'm basically, like I've been reading about, yeah. Kind of breaking up there, I can't, can't make out what you're saying. Uh, basically, yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, just, uh, hooked up on, like, uh, got on my, uh, laptop computer. Basically, I've been, like, uh, seeing a lot of problems with, uh, through apostolic, uh, reformation, 
And I do consider it that's the prosperity gospel on steroids. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There, the NAR thing is pretty bad. Definitely. No. Nope. Do you have any questions or anything? Kind of breaking up there a little bit. Um, no. So I believe this lockdown uh, ends pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope it's over too soon too. It's pretty bad. So. Okay, well, I can't really, I'm not really hearing a whole lot of what you're saying, uh, William. Um, do you have any questions or anything be here before I have somebody else come on? No. Yeah, they have somebody else come on. That'd be good. Okay, that was good hearing from you. Sorry, the connection is not the greatest here, but nice hearing hearing from you. Okay. Anybody else want to join? Hey, hey, Brian. Check your personal message thing on the, on the on the Streamyard thing. What's where's that at? Oh. It should be next to the live comments. Private chat. Okay. That's just gotcha. So, um, I know what you're saying. I just figured, you know, I was yeah, no, actually no, kind of, just, just my opinion. Yeah. I was kind of wishing an enemy would come. No. <laughs> <laughs> See if I can get one. But, uh, so are they, are they requiring, um, face masks to go into stores out there in your area, brother? Um, yeah, they're they're trying to. Indiana has been kind of loose with it. I mean, I mean, they're one of the first to kind of start putting stuff down, but they weren't too bad with it. Like, cause it, like right where I live, um, there's um, it, it, it's it's kind of a mixed bag. Some people, a lot of people, like they'll come in wearing a mask, but and some people they are like wearing like scarves and and just weird stuff. And then it just kind of depends because I live in like a richer suburban area, so it. A lot of people don't care, but then as you start to get into the, the lower tier type of areas, people that are like just totally panicked, you know, because they're in you know fear of the government. But hmm. it's kind of it's kind of fifty fifty. I I know every state around me is really cracking down, but Indiana's been kind of loose with it for the most part. Hmm. All right, I have a couple more people here want to join, so I know who one of them is here at least. So we'll have. 
Okay. Hi. Hello. Hi. You all right? How are yeah. you doing? Pretty good. How are you doing? I am fine. I. Yeah, I'm probably putting on a bit of weight not being at work though. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to. I wanted. If, if you've if you've got your Bible there, I wanted to go to Daniel eight. Um, because you were on about you were on about the Antichrist earlier on. Um, and when you when you head into uh, when you head into uh, chapter eight, Daniel chapter eight, mm-hmm. I'll start reading. If I'll start reading from verse six, and he came to the ram that had two horns which I had seen standing before the river and ran unto him in the fury of his power. This is talking about, uh, from from the research I've done, this is talking about ex- Alexander the Great. When you, when, you, when you go through it all, and I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with collar against him and smote the ram and break his two horns. I think them two horns represent the Persian Empire before... Alexander the Great went on a rampage and there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Therefore, the he goat waxed very great. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. Now, that there is describing um, Alexander the Great's empire being split off into four. I'm not sure if you've uh, if you've looked into this. Mm. Um, anyway, out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed. So out, out of one of those four areas of Alexander the Great's now like dissolved empire, um, I think it was Ptolemaic Egypt, some area in Turkey, and a couple of other ones. Out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground. Who's that there? Is that, is that, is that like basically Satan? in the form of the Antichrist. I don't know. Because then it says, yeah, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Daniel 8's not a real strong one for me. To be very honest with you, I haven't really studied it that much. Hmm. That was just because I've been back and forward between uh, between this and Revelation, and like you can you can kind of you can I mean it doesn't really m- make any difference to us like we're living in the church age, you know, because all mm-hmm. of this is uh, this is all to come. Like you see, I mean we 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 be out the way when when all of this sort of stuff's going on, but it is like kind of interesting to look at it. When you think someone might be born during the thousand year reign, and then they'll read they'll read this prophecy here, mm-hmm. and they'll be able to, they'll be able they'll be able to see exactly what uh, like what, how it's like sort of panned out. Like the first half's already happened, but I think the second half's still to come. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's like I said, that's something I really haven't I haven't gotten much into Daniel chapter eight, so. Just gonna be oh, honest, well. I don't know. No, it's I mean it's uh oh, it's neat props. Um I, I've I've been through Daniel quite a few times and that, like looking at the horns and all the rest of it and like the empires and all, all of that sort of stuff. And like mm-hmm. there's so much you would have to you would have to put like you know how like detectives create them big boards and they put like they put like faces on them and connect them with bits of string and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> you'd probably have to go through that sort of process in order to try and fathom out what, what what's actually going on here. But I I do, I do get I do get that some of us 
some of it un, uh, uh, we'll never be able to understand, you know. Anyway, I just thought I'd pop in, like, because I've never here. Yeah, I've never been on, like, I've got my own videos, but I've, I thought I've never been on one of yours, like, so there you have mm -hmm. it. I thought, yeah. 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 I just like to say hello to Jacob and all. How, how are you doing? Yeah. How's things over there in the UK? Ah, oh, it's it's all right. Yeah, like I say, we're all we're all on lockdown and that. Um, that where I work, you're probably aware from my videos that I work uh, at Nissan building building cars. They've just built uh, a multi million pound facility opposite. Um, because what happened was when when we when the UK come out and um, through Brexit, it would um. Nissan have turned round to some of the suppliers on the continent who were in France and Spain and said, look, you just need to move into this new, um, it's called an Inter Ad International Advanced Manufacturing Park, otherwise you lose the contract. And it was Nissan's way of trying to uh, cut down on, on the cost of transporting the parts from the continent over to the UK. But what the, what's was recently announced only yesterday of one of those massive uh, empty factories because currently empty these firms haven't moved in there yet. They're converting it into a COVID-19 emergency hospital. Mm. So, and I, I think what they're trying to do, I mean, I get, I get that, I get that the media lie, I do. I mean, you, some of it's so blatantly obvious that you've just got to turn it off when it's on. But I think what they're worried about is, you see this COVID-19, this coronavirus, it has been around. I watched your video, it has been around. They're trying to say that it's a different stream that's possibly came from a bat, like a bat. Um, and I think what they're worried about, because I think the flu, I was reading the flu has a 0 0.1 um percent death uh, ratio or so every 0.1 percent of people who get a flu will die but this yeah COVID-19 has got a four percent chance of killing people and I think that's what the government at the minute is worried about if people continue go about go, going about their regular normal daily activities um and because it has a higher chance of spreading. Yeah, I get, mm -hmm. I get, I get this. I get this. Like, I, this is all come, this is all come from reading uh, news articles. And this is all come about from watching the news and all that. And I know, I know that that stuff is de designed to spread fear, if not just outright lies. But I think the worries in this country anyway about, about the NHS becoming overwhelmed with people taking up beds and ventilators and stuff like that. So, I it's pretty much sitting in the house. Um, you're allowed out for, for to buy food and stuff like that. You're allowed out for um, exercise, but you're not allowed within a certain radius of your home. And um, the police uh, breaking up and dispersing gatherings of youths because they haven't been really paying attention mm. and fining the parents and stuff like that so uh, uh, it's, I'd rather be I'd rather be back at work to be honest with you I mean it was all right for the first couple of weeks because it's like yay I'm not at work I'm not at work now bit of a holiday but now now I, I want I'd rather be back at work to be honest with you yeah 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 no. Well, it's good talking to you. I got a bunch of other people lined up here, so I got to keep things moving. But it's good to talk to you. No probs, Brian. Speak All right. to you later. Bye. All right. See ya. All right. Next we have Ren, I guess. Hello, Ren. <laughs> Are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Uh, okay, I just have one quick uh, one quick question. Okay. Um uh so basically when the uh Jesus comes or if he's here I'm not exactly um 
I'm pointing that because I don't have, I don't have a, a, the Bible. And I don't actually like read it. Um, and I came to, came to your channel like half a year ago. Um, so I have a quick question. Like when the Jesus comes and picks up the bodies, you know, into the heaven, how will that look like? So he picks you up. Um, does that resemble in a death? Death um, or how? How about? No, I believe that the bodies will actually be disappearing. The the uh, Christians will be just gone. Uh, Enoch in the Old Testament um, typifies that. It says he was not found. So the, when the okay. resurrection happens, the dead in Christ that are currently buried, the saints that have died in the past, they'll be caught up, and then living saints will go up as well. So there will be, hmm. you know, Christians will be gone. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's just what I tried to like ask you. Okay, thank you for answering. Sure. Okay. We'll go on to the next one. Here. Shane. Oh, dude. I've been waiting to talk to you, Brian. Well, here I am. <laughs> well, first of all, I would like to thank you with everything that I have, Brian, because... I'm actually originally from Pennsylvania, Lancaster. Sorry, oh, yeah. dude. I'm a little bit nervous. I feel like I'm meeting like Justin Bieber as a lost man or <laughs> something. <laughs> you know? no. like, I look up to you so much. It's not even funny, man. Wow. Like you're the reason I have this right now. This is a local Bible publisher's Bible. And I watch that because. Oh, man. Yeah, but uh, it's a rough time right now. And. Mm -hmm. Dude, your videos are keeping me going, and the most recent one on the men going their own way, like, I needed to hear that, dude. I feel convicted in every single video you make, and I love that, dude. It's like, keep doing that, man. There's a lot of love that you're showing throughout your videos, and I know that your convictions are all out of love, and that's what makes me better as a Christian, and you're edifying me a lot. And just know that there's a lot of young men watching you right now. I'd like to say uh, hi to Bobby Barrett. I know he's either watching this right now or he's going to. We actually came in fellowship because of you, Brian, and we're actually really close because we have a lot of the similar beliefs because of your videos, and it just sucks because there's a lot of other Christians that I talk to that it ends up becoming an argument because you know how it goes. And yep. it sucks. And I was trying to get some fellowship on like the Facebook pages and stuff like that. And they're all like dictated by these admins that will literally just take you out of there. As soon as you say anything about the Trinity or Roman Catholicism, they're so protected. And it's like, I'm just slashing swords with them, dude. It's like the seventh day Adventists are all in there and they're all like yoked in together with all these Christians. And it's like, you're not even allowed to post videos anymore or anything like that, but it's just crazy, man. I didn't think it was like this and I was an atheist all my life until last year I was addicted to drugs and I was living in my own apartment and stuff like this. It was terrible. And I didn't even know God or even read one page out of the Bible yet. And mm -hmm. it came to the point where I was ready to kill myself. And I said, God, look, I'm ready to kill myself right now. Please save me. You know, it was just like a natural instinct for me to do that. And he led me to the truth, dude. I was watching uh, Robert Breaker or whatever. And I was like, not really getting it, you know? I scrolled mm -hmm. down just to see the suggested videos you're calling out Robert Breaker. And then I started watching you. And ever since then, I almost watched every single video you ever had. I listen to you at work every day. It's like, thank you so much, man. You're doing a great job. I see a lot. Of <laughs> I just, oh, dude, I relate to you so much now, especially on this whole journey. And I'm reading the Bible a lot more, but I keep falling in and out of fellowship and it sucks and it really hurts me, man. And it's like, even at this time, I'm not, being the greatest Christian right now. And I know that. And it's just, once you start falling away, it's so hard to get back. You know, I just mm -hmm. wish that I was back to that time where it felt like God was right by my side, but it's like, I keep doing things that are terrible, man. It's almost pushing them away. You know, it's like, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Well, it can happen, you know, and I, I certainly have had my times up and down and things. You know? <sighs> so, the Lord's always w willing to forgive, you know, and, and you can get back in fellowship. You're absolutely right, Brian. How are you and your family holding up? Good. They yeah, were doing great. 
Yeah, we just got uh, about 18 inches of snow just two days ago. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> hey. so yeah, it's cold. Yeah, I'm still in Lancaster, PA. Good old Lancaster, you know. Yeah. 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 What part of Lancaster? Uh, I'm actually in the Susquehanna Valley. I live in Bainbridge, PA. Mm, okay. So uh, it's close to Elizabethtown, and I'm mm -hmm. kind of right in the middle of Harrisburg, Lancaster, New York like the the triangle right there so mm -hmm. i got masonic village right there in e-town and my sister actually works there and stuff like that so that kind of sucks but my sister-in-law works there oh so. does she still currently yep oh okay yeah so <laughs> i can't yeah. wait my great grandfather he was a 32nd degree freemason but i was too young to really be able to talk to him about any stuff like that i actually wanted to be a freemason when i was younger but thank god that i'd never went through with any of that stuff you know it mm -hmm. seemed like he had me in the right path before i even became a christian you know what i mean like i look back and just see how many times like he was looking out for me you know yeah absolutely it's awesome well praise the lord it's good talking yep. to you i gotta keep yep. things moving because there's that sounds good man people but yeah yep god nice bless you brother you. Yep. i love you brian see you later right. see ya Okay. All right, Roger. Hi, hello, Roger. hello. Yep. Hi, brother Brian. It's a it's an absolute blessing to be. Able, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good, fine. good. I know people are kind of having some, you know, uh, internet problems. Just want to make sure it's working all right. But I just want to say, mm -hmm. it's an absolute blessing to talk to you. Uh, the Lord uses you uh, in just to where you're the only preacher I listen to. Let me put it that way. Uh, you and I listened to uh, Brother Peter Ruckman. However, I'm very um, I'm cautious after the years of stuff that uh, you pointed out. So I have to be I have to ask the Holy Ghost to really uh, you know uh, have, give me discernment when I uh, watch all that other stuff. When I watch your stuff, though, it's an absolute ble blessing. I know the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and completely and utterly clearing up other stuff that I think just a lot of Bible believing Christians never even thought about. So thank you so much for, you know, doing what you do and having the, you know, Holy ghost lead you. So that's what I want to say first and foremost. And, uh, amen. Amen. And, um, uh, so I want to let you know, I've been, uh, following your channel for, uh, close to a couple of years now. And just like Shane, the, uh, the brother that you just had on almost, saying uh word for word what happened to my uh brother and i my you know uh uh biological brother if you will um mm -hmm. same thing R robert breaker and then we saw a suggested video from you rebuking him and uh after that we just it was that was it the holy ghost told us that's it that's it go to that channel so praise the lord for it and uh i i guess i don't really want to you've answered so many questions for me over um, live streams, like through the comment sections and everything. So I don't really have any questions per se. I just want to read something uh, from, from the word Psalm 91, because of this whole thing that's going on right now uh, with this whole COVID 19, I thought this would be great. Psalm 91. And that's uh, he that dwelt in the secret place of the most high shall Abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And watch it. And from the noisome pestilence. Hmm. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Um, the noisome pestilence. Uh, that's What's going on here, uh, I live in the Detroit metro area. I live in Warren, which is literally just two miles away from Detroit, just to give everyone an idea. And I just want to bring up something real fast. I work in a hospital. Um, I work for, uh, I work a very secular job, Brother Brian. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, I don't enjoy doing it. My, uh, my passion is something else, something that I feel that isn't literally ran and controlled by Jesuits, literally. Uh, 
the actual, I work for a hospital. I work for Ascension Hospital. The logo is a cicatra. Let me put it that way. It's an actual cicatra. Uh, and there's a big A in the middle for Ascension. Um, but yeah, this is what I do right here. Um, sterile, oops, <laughs> backwards, sterile processing tech. Mm. And I'm on the front line. I'm not a nurse by any means. I don't deal with patients directly, but I basically used to clean and sterilize surgical instruments. And I can tell you, this whole COVID, this corona thing going on right now, bizarre. I mean, when I say, if you go to the hospital, I know the news, the mainstream media, which I don't listen to, and I praise the Lord that you spoke on that years ago. It's all propaganda. It's all literally lies from start to finish. So. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's just complete lies, but anyway, uh, but unfortunately there's so many people, especially people I know directly that are just so hooked on it. So, you know, I try to point out stuff to them, uh, stuff like, for example, all these beds are supposedly filled, right? All these beds. If you went into the hospital that I worked in right now, it's dead, dead. There's no one, there's no one in these rooms. There's no one is this whole thing is just bizarre you know so i just wanted to bring that attention i know you're an extremely busy man the lord keeps you busy so yeah i just wanted to throw that by you this whole thing is just uh, it really is the end times it's it's um, it's amazing you know mm -hmm. yeah it's it's there's a spiritual aspect to it definitely yep. Yep. yeah 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 so so all right well, yeah. very... go ahead <laughs> oh no i was just about to say truly um Thank you so much. And uh, I pray for your family um, and uh, you and your family uh, almost every night, um, as much as my fiance remember to try to always, uh, if there's something that I know um, that I can bring your family, get your, involved in pray for them and blessings upon you and your family. Stay healthy. Keep fighting a good fight. And uh, my, my family and I are here to support you. So, um, uh, yeah, I know. It's hard. I can only imagine a spiritual tax. Me as a um, someone who doesn't has, you know, only my walk with the Lord so far. I know spiritual tax are hard. So I just pray that the Lord protects you and your family and hides you in the cleft of the rock and covers um, you with his hand. So I appreciate and, that. Uh, uh, of course, anytime you're welcome. And uh, to the rest of the brethren out there, please uh, just stay, keep to the word. <laughs> Keep to the word, um, and uh, uh, remember that uh, the Lord is, you know, uh, if the Lord's with us, who can be against us? So, and, uh, you, you know, so God bless. Amen. It's good talking to you. You as well, brother. Amen. Bye-bye. See ya. Okay, next we'll go to Andrew John. Oh, Hi. Hi, sorry it took so long uh, to get to you. No, that's okay. Uh, you got a line of people I know. Yeah. Um, I was, um, I, I wanted to chime in a little bit and just say, yeah, this whole thing's contrived. Um, you know, they inflate the numbers. Um, there was a doctor that came out from Montana, uh, and, and they had a conference there, and she, um, uh, Bukacek, I think her name is. I don't know if you've seen anything on her. Uh, I posted in in chat though um, her name, but um, yeah, it's it's definitely part of the beast system. They're rolling out, you know, everything related to it is is part of it. So yeah, but thanks for for hanging in there and and you know exposing some of that. I wanted to know: um, Are you still following uh, David Hoffman? You still watch his videos? I, I well, haven't had a chance to a whole lot. Yeah. I, well, I recommended his study Bible the one time, and I, I really haven't you know, had much time to check into him. Why? Yeah. Well, um, he's come out for, you know, the uh, flat earth thing and mm -hmm. all this. He posts videos on it, and very interesting. Um, but he's been doing that for probably since 2017. By the way, I've been watching your stuff since uh, 2014, I think, and mm -hmm. trying to support as I can and 
So I've been a long time, you know, watcher of your, you know, I guess you could say follower of your stuff. Very, I mean, it's uh, helped me a lot. <laughs> um, uh, I, I kind of, you know, it, it um, I relate to you a lot because my mom's side of the family are German Mennonites as well, Schultzes and mm. Schultz and um, so I grew up around them. Um, and, uh, and uh, I think that's, that's one of the reasons why, why I, I, I trusted in a lot of the stuff that you're, that you're saying, and, uh, you know, from the Bible as well, you know, you can, right. every, yeah. you know, it's just right there. So, um, but yeah, it, it helped me get back into the book. I've been saved since I, you know, I'm, I think I'm, uh, I'm probably about your age, 40. I was saved yep. uh, 19, but just, you know, back and forth out of fellowship with the Lord. And, um, you know, part of it was I was, you know, kind of drawn in by these other um, denominations, uh, Mormons and Baptists, and none of them really had anything valid to say, I thought. So I, 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 I was, you know, just – kind of drifting with the wind for a while and um, uh, watching your videos helped me get back, get back into reading and stuff. So I, I really appreciate that. Praise, uh, praise the Lord. So, uh, the, the David Hoffman thing, he, he uh, put out a question uh, on his mailing list. So he mailed, um, you know, a bunch of people who supported him and whatnot and who he's been in contact with um, asking for ideas for videos, right? So I kind of kicked him a little bit, I, and I wanted to know where his stand was. Uh, I, I, I asked him, could you please do a series on why you are not a Trinitarian? And he responded back, um, you know, I, I don't see where you get that idea because I am a Trinitarian, you know? Um, what, <laughs> you know, so I, I was just like floored by that. I mean, I kind of expected it, but to hear it come out of his own mouth w was kind of shocking. Hmm. So, you know, I refer to him to, uh, I refer to him uh, a, a couple of your videos and, and some scripture, you know, some, you know, the John six uh, and, and, and a couple other things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and he, he, he responded back in a way he, he kind of attacked you, made it all about you, you know? And I, I guess, you know, he's been, he's been watching your stuff too. He, he said, you know, and, but he, he just like, it, I found it strange that, that he, you know, it's like you're not supposed to to go along with what people say. You're supposed to read scriptures and pray about it, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wonder what your thought is on that. What? Why would he just make it, you know, attacking Brian Dillinger? You know, of course you're going to attack the messenger. But, you know, it, you, think, you think that's maybe because you're one of the few people that I that I hear talk about this subject. Yeah, it's 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 something that these guys. I'm getting the echo thing again. <laughs> um, it's something that these guys they feel threatened about it because um, they, I guess if they if they say if if I come out against the Trinity, then that's going to mean I'm going to lose fellowship with a lot of the teachers that I've recommended and whatever else. So then they'll just instead of dealing with the scriptures. They make it about me that it's my doctrine that I teach, and it's not. Yeah, it just is not. So he, he uses that passage that Jesus said, it, um, "If the, the, something about the Father will let you know whether or not the doctrine I speak of is mine, or 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 or, or is of God or mine own," you know, mm -hmm. he uses that a lot. So um, I don't see why he doesn't pray about it. You know. I mean, yeah, he, he it's like he's got this inflated sense of himself. So I, don't know, I just want to put that out there. Uh, just, mm -hmm. you know, everybody who's been watching or following you know, anybody, you, you have to test it. You know, you can't just you have to be in the book. You know, you say that quite a lot. And I, I, I respect that. But um, anyways, I'm gonna let you go. God bless. Love talking to you. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> it's been great. Um, you have an awesome resurrection day. Yeah, you too. Nice talking to you.
All right. Hi, Sean. Hello. How are you doing? Can you hear me? Pretty good. Yep, I can hear you. Yeah, this is Austin. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Austin. <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting that I the first time we actually get to talk face to face is in a time where a supposed illness is circulating throughout the world, supposedly. Mm -hmm. The first video I ever saw that you made was uh, the one with Christians being mentally ill. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I actually saw you for the first time. And I've never actually seen a, a, a live stream with you because I've always you know, been tied up or whatever, but I always mm -hmm. watch your videos after. So just by chance today, I guess it was, you know, the Lord's movement that I happened to see this and you sent the link to join in. And I've been doing a lot of research recently because I have a sister that's actually a doctor of pharmacology. She's not a Christian. She um, she works with, I'm actually originally from Trinidad. She okay. is in Jamaica. She works for the University of the West Indies and she studies vaccines. Uh, she's hmm. actually worked on dengue, um, what's the other one, Zika, all of those supposed mosquito-borne viruses and whatnot. Mm. Uh, but the long and short of what I wanted to, to tell you about is that we've had this ongoing debate for years because, of course, I don't recommend vaccines or anything, and she actually does research into it, you know? Yeah. So recently, because of this lockdown, everybody being home and whatnot, I had a little more time, obviously. So mm. I started re digging into it even more. And I was looking out for when you might stumble across this, but I haven't, I haven't actually heard you talk about it. So I don't know if you and your wife actually know about it or not. Hmm. I'm not but sure. all of this is actually based on something called, is all, all this is actually based on something called germ theory. Have you ever heard of a guy called Louis Pasteur? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the guy who invented pasteurization. Right. Right. Okay. So he, mm -hmm. Basically, long story short, don't want to take up too much time. There is the theory theory that germs, bacteria, viruses, etc., are the causative factor of disease. And there's another theory that it's actually germs, bacteria, etc., occur naturally in the body. Well, that's not theory, that's proven. You have billions of bacteria, billions of viruses all the time in your body. And they're actually the cleanup mechanism that removes toxins and all that stuff from your body. That's mm -hmm the part of the science that is not being spoken about by the mainstream, because of course they want to promote the vaccines, they want to promote their agenda, etc. So sure. in doing my research, I came across this book. Can you see it? What really makes what? you ill, okay. Right? It's, it's recent actually, it was published in 2019. It's written by, um, uh, can you see it there, Don and but a camera. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. It? Uh huh. Yeah. So Sorry, I just started I reading it. As as you can see, it's it's just as thick as the Bible. It's, yeah. it's very well researched, right? And it it speaks to a lot of the fallacies, and it's literally fallacies that we believe in today. So there has actually, in order for for a virus or any particular pathogen or whatever you want to call it to supposedly cause a disease, mm -hmm. there's something, there's a series of tests that you have to perform in order for that to be proven. Well, don't take my word for it. Of course, you do your own research, but apparently no virus has ever been isolated and shown to be the exact cause of any disease, period. It's never been done. Hmm. So I wanted to bring that to your attention, bring this book to your attention and bring something called germ theory to your attention so that you could probably research it because I know you're into natural health and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Right. So look into that. Um, hope it helps yeah. with all of this that's going on. Right. Again, the, game, the, the name of the book is What, what, makes you what Really Makes You Ill. It's available on Amazon. That's where I got my copy. Right, and it's written by Don Lester and David Parker. Don Lester and David Parker. Okay. Right, very, very, very well researched mm -hmm. and very thorough. So, um, huh. yeah, just thought I would uh, chime in and let you know 
that i of course watch all of your content very much appreciate everything that you have been teaching throughout or, you know the time that i've been listening to you and i i've even gone back to your old audio sermons because what i do every night i fall asleep listening to old, old stuff you know but um you know it's it's just incredible what's going on right now and it's incredible that you have had all of this you know and you haven't been taken down off of youtube that had to be god right <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah. i'm glad that yeah. you and your family are, are doing well you know and uh god bless you richly and i hope to speak with you again soon i don't want to take up too much more of your time just wanted to chime in about this yes. virus thing all right yes very nice to meet you and thank you I, nice to meet you too we'll check into that that's that's really interesting all right take care okay god bless to everybody out there bye bye see ya okay next we have Anne in ireland Anne. hello ryan how are you good um, it's lovely to talk to you. I only recently um, found your videos and they've been a true blessing in my life. As you probably know, Ireland is a very, very strongly Catholic country. Mm -hmm. And um, thank God, a few years ago, I came to the realization myself that a lot of what was being taught was wrong. It was against the word of God. I got my, word, my first Bible and I realized like, idolatry was in the church and things and i came to my own enlightenment i suppose you could say that catholicism was wrong and since then i've been trying to get to know the lord myself and doing my own research and reading the word and coming to know him and i only recently found your videos and it's been a real blessing so thank you so much um somebody else brought up robert breaker there um a few mm -hmm. moments ago and he was one of the people that i had been watching and I was wondering what your thoughts were on how he teaches about rightly dividing the words and how Paul is specifically for us and that we shouldn't worry too much about, say, the Old Testament and things like that. Um, do you have any thoughts on that, Brian? Um, well, I, I'm dispensational as well. I think Robert Breaker, he, lends, he, he tends to lean a little bit more hyper dispensational, which is... They, they really focus a lot on Paul. Um, but 1 Timothy chapter 6 talks about if any, uh, where are we at here? 1 Timothy chapter 6, um, verse 3, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and it goes in, it says he's proud doing nothing. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so the Gospels are there as well, and all Scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, righteousness. So you can't just focus completely on what Paul said. Now, you know, you can get doctrine throughout the Bible, um, but dispensationally, yeah, I do believe the Bible should be rightly divided. Um, but I'm not going to just say only what Paul wrote, uh, you know. Absolutely. Whatever. Um, another thing that I, I um, heard recently, I'm sorry now, I won't take too much more of your time, was that um, there's a possibility that Matthew, Mark, and Luke are for different people because of different descriptions in them. For instance, mm -hmm. the robes that um, were placed on Christ before his crucifixion um, being purple, scarlet, and then a glorious or a gorgeous robe in Luke, and that Luke might be more for those that are going to be taken um before things get extremely bad uh, do you have any thoughts on that um that Luke that's is not, more for... i i haven't really studied that yeah honestly i've heard it but i haven't really looked into that issue that much thanks a million for your time it's been a pleasure and i look forward to research more of your videos over time and god bless everybody here and your family as well brian it's lovely to talk to you god bless you god bless you Okay, uh, David Prado. David, are you there? Uh, oh, oops, no. Add to live stream. There we go. Can, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Ah, uh, man. Well, I just want to say I've been watching, I've been watching your videos too, and appreciate them. And um, 
just hope God just keeps blessing you. And man, I'll be thanking, thanking God for your work that you've done. And just just hanging in there and sticking sticking with the truth and being bold. And I just I just have two things. One is kind of like I just want to get your take on it. Um, if you go to, I mean, I, I know you know it. It's um, First John chapter five, mm-hmm. verse verse thirteen. Right. It's just speaking about how you can know you have eternal life. And for me, I've just been studying, just trying to clarify the gospel, you know, the process of it to not only help authenticate myself, right, to confirm myself, but to help other people. And I just wanted to be able to tell people how you can know as clear as I could be. And it says here that you can know. And at the beginning of the first 13, it says, I have written unto you. So technically he wrote unto you how you can know. Mm-hmm. And I believe obviously all of first John is good, good test for you. But I believe the summary of it is in chapter five, verse three and four. Um, well, if you look at verse two, three and four, it says, by this, we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Well, I guess it would be two and three, but um, now we know that you actually have to want God and want what he says, right? In verse three, it says that they're not grievous, right? If you grieve to do what God wants, then you probably don't want God. But then the next part is... um, what does it mean to keep his commandments? Because I hear all the time, all these people saying, you need to obey, you need to obey, you ain't going to make it, stuff like that. And keeping his commandments could mean obey, but we know that you don't need to obey anything except the gospel today. I mean, I'm pretty, it's pretty clear in the Pauline epistles, he always says, obey the gospel, obey. And then once you obey, you want to do it. But um, the, what I wanted to tell you is, it, it tells you three things. It's how it tells you how you can know if you love God and you keep his commandments. And it turns out that in the gospel of John, it also talks about this. So if you don't mind going to the, the gospel of John chapter 14, mm-hmm. just real quick. Well, it's, it's chapter 14, and it sort of starts at verse 15. And in the context, he's talking about, if you keep my commandments, um, and in verse 17, it says that you know him, right? Now, if you go to verse 21, it just kind of repeats it. I believe John heard this language from Jesus, and he's repeating it. But in verse 21, it says, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he is it that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Now, that doesn't answer what it means to keep his commandments. But if you read, if you keep reading in verse 22, somebody asked him a question, right? Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto, the, unto us and not unto the world? So I believe he's saying to clarify what's going on. He's telling them this and he's asking for further clarification because the thing is, if keeping your commandments, keeping God's commandments means to obey, then um, you just have some problems because there's people that can keep and obey and have more self-control than me. Right. But that doesn't mean that they're saying that just means they have more self-control like Joel or seen right people like that. I mean, they're, they're precise. I mean, you got to at least respect how good they are as far as hiding stuff and um, just being real precise on the work. But if you read in verse 23, he goes ahead and answers. And I, I, I answer this to people, but I just want to know what you think. It just okay. says, Jesus answers, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our bow with him. Now... I try to just tell people that if, if you hear what Jesus says and keep them, 
Like keep his words and have faith in him and his works. Even if, you know, even if trials come and even if you fail at the end of the day, if you still want them and cherish them, um, that's a way you can know. That's how that's what I believe it means. Keeping his commandments, because other versions change, keep to obey. And I have a problem with that because, again, obeying isn't the gospel. And he's talking in future tense here. Right? He's talking about the spirit of truth coming. He's talking about this dispensation. And I don't know. I just wanted to see if you agree with that. And is that something proper you could tell somebody? Because, I mean, you, you can't prove like you can't know if, if over years come and trials come and you know failures and successes and you still keep his commandments i mean you can know after a couple of years um you can know that you ain't gonna change i mean mm -hmm. it's just this is just the direction it's going and i don't know it's, i just want to know if that made any sense to you i know it didn't really make sense to a lot of other people but um that's just something i thought maybe it would yeah. be important but um and then the other question is i know I uh, just try to make it quick. Um, I know that um, you you don't believe that uh, that the that the Godhead is, or at least let's just say the soul is not the spirit of the man, right? Mm -hmm. um, man, man's composed of um, three parts. Well, um, and also I'm not really sure, but I also think that um, you believe that God is not, even though we're created in his image, we're not exactly the same as God, though, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I would say that, you know, like we have a mind and God has a mind. Um, that's similar components that make us compatible. But we're not the same level of him, obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, I would I would. From my research, I tend to disagree that I, I believe it's looking like we are in very similar design. And I, I believe the King James Version only has it. But if you go to, um, you know, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. Um, I mean, it's just one example that I'm sure y'all know, but... Um, it's talking about um, it's talking about how lost people how they they have the spirit of this world and you know thinking in vain, but then it talks about you being um, reprogrammed right with the word of God. You accepted it as true as God's word, and with the spirit of your mind, you're taking this in, and. Um, I know, I know there's a lot to be said, but um, I, I would just say that this the spirit could possibly be um, your mind and how you take in words, which are spiritual. Because I know in, um, what is it, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 talks about, you know, your, your um, spirit, soul, and body blameless in front of the Lord, mm -hmm. something like that. And um, that is true, but where is the mind in that scenario, though? Because if the mind's connected to the body, I believe that is true. It's connected to the body, but your mind is spiritual, though. And if your mind's spiritual and can take in spiritual things, um, I just believe that your soul might be, because um, I know that you understand that the soul is connected to your mind, clearly. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just saying that you, when you take in information, your soul adheres to that. And that's how it could be connected with other people and God. If you take it in and you desire it and keep it, um, I believe that there, there's just, there's just a lots of weird stuff like that. But, um, yeah. I just, I just had a question that, um, that, that there's just a lot of similarities between us and God. Um, another one is how how could god um how do you say how could god bear witness of himself right people always put that on especially people that don't believe that jesus is god how could god bear witness of himself and 
You know, it's a good question, but we can actually bear witness of ourselves with our conscience, right? Um, Paul does it, and, you know, Paul does it. What, what verse was that? Uh, 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 Romans uh, 9, verse 1. Okay, hold uh, on. And here, Romans 2. Just hold on for a minute. Um, we're, I'm going to have to get going here. Okay. Oh, right, so I may talk so much, but I, there, right, I just I just appreciate all your work. Thank you. Yeah, not a problem. So, uh, bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. Um, just looking at the time, I'm gonna have to get going. So, uh, mm -hmm. nice to hear from everybody, and um, we will see you in the next live stream. But like I said, I have to get going. So, that's gonna be it. Thank you, everybody, for watching.